Hello, I am Charlotte from Brown Deer Public Library. Welcome to Coder Dojo number two. Our offline activity is called Invisible Maze, and our online activity is going to be to make a maze using Scratch. So for the offline activity, you're going to need a piece of paper. A clipboard helps, especially if you're outdoors, um, and two colors of marker. When we're at the library, we would be in the big community room and I'd get a bunch of chairs out and I'd line them up in a grid. And then with one color marker, you would kind of draw the outline of the maze, which would be the edges of the room and all the chairs. But since we're not at the library, um, you could use a room in your house and use objects like chairs or toys as kind of landmarks throughout the maze, or even pieces of paper on the ground. Um, especially if they're different colored pieces of paper, or if you can like write words on the pieces of paper to help you keep track of where you are in the maze. So like, You'll want to mark the start and end of your maze, and then maybe I put a cat stuffed animal here. Um, maybe I put a piece of paper with a heart on it here, and uh, a book here. What else could I use? A shoe. It's kind of a shoe. So now, and I, I put these objects in the real world too. And now I decide where my invisible monsters are. I'm gonna put an invisible monster right there. Rawr. If you have stickers, this would be a great time to use stickers as your monsters. Um, I'm also going to put one right here. So then I would ask my friend to start at the start and try to get to the end. And if my friend walks into a monster, I'd say, oh, go back to the beginning. And then my friend has to remember where the invisible monsters are. So in this maze, you can go up and around and this way to get to the end. But if you go straight through, you'll hit a monster. If you try to go this way, you'll hit a monster. And of course, then switch who knows where the monsters are and who's walking through the maze. Okay, now we're going to go on to our online activity. Okay, last time we learned how to move our character around so that when an arrow key is pressed, the sprite will point in a certain direction and move. Now we need to draw a maze. So in the bottom right-hand corner, click Stage. Now in the top left-hand corner, you have been looking at code, now switch to Backdrops. You start with Backdrop 1, which is just blank. And you could draw on this. I made another one. I named it Maze. I used the rectangle tool and I, I took away the outline so that it's just these purple walls. And you'll notice that the sprite is too big to fit through these. So I am going to click on Sprite and I'm going to change the size to 50 so now it's small enough to fit through. But you'll also notice that the sprite can just walk through the walls. We need to explain to the sprite that it's not allowed to do that. So with sprite selected, go back to code. If you had stage selected and went to code, there wouldn't be any code. So go back to sprite. So we have these rules about how the sprite can move. We're going to start by making a rule that says when the start flag is clicked, when we start the game, we want the sprite cat to be right here. 
and there's a nice option in motion called go to XY. So wherever the cat is, you'll notice XY keeps changing. It's kind of like GPS coordinates. So I'm going to take that over. So now, even if I put the cat over there, when I click the start button, the cat moves to the starting spot. Another rule we need to make is that when the flag is clicked, when the game is started, uh, forever, every, well, the whole time, um, we want to make a rule that says if the cat is touching the purple wall, then it moves backwards so that it's like it bounces back. And on the left side, you'll see a sensing option. You're going to pick that hexagon that says touching color. And I, I don't want light pink. I want to, or I want to make sure it's the purple of the wall, so I use the eyedrop color. So if the cat touches that purple color of the wall, then move. But we don't want to move forward. We want to move backwards. We're going to do negative 10 steps. Okay, let's test that out. Click start, and yep, bouncing back from the walls. Now we have to walk around the walls. Oops. Okay, so what happened there was my sprite uh, bumped into the wall while facing down and kind of skidded along the wall up. There we go. Got around it. I made it through! Okay, that is the end of our online activity. If you are trying to get the Coder Dojo badge for the Summer Reading 2020 program on Beanstack, you will need to take a picture of the offline or the online activity to show that you did it. You'll need to do it for Coder Dojo 1, 2, 3, and 4, and you'll need to email that to bdpl.ref at midplace.org. We will send you the secret code then you go on to Beanstack and enter the secret code. And I will include the email address and the link to Beanstack in the description of the video. Have a wonderful day!